So after two weeks in the desert at Indian Wells, the biggest tournament since the Australian Open for the men and also the biggest tournament for the women as well. We had some really interesting results and it actually resulted in changes to the top 10 as well. So let's go have a look at who actually won in Indian Wells last week. Starting on the women's side, we had Igor Fiontek winning her second title in three years in the desert, beating Maria Sakri 6-4-6 love, who she actually beat two years ago at this event. And on the men's side, Carlos Alcaraz goes back to back. He beats Medvedev again in the final 7-6-6-1 to lift his second Indian Wells trophy. So a couple of repeat champions and a couple of repeat finals going the way of Fiontek and Alcaraz. All right, let's start with the players that are outside the top 10 that have gone up in the rankings this week. Tommy Paul, he's gone up three spots to number 14 in the world after making the semifinals of Indian Wells last week. Marta Kostruk, she's gone up six spots to number 26 in the world, which is a career high for her after also making the semifinals last week. And Caroline Wozniacki, she's gone up 75 spots to 129 in the world after making to the quarterfinals of Indian Wells last week. So big moves there for the players that did super well at the event. Having a look at the players that went down to the rankings this week, Francis Tiafo. He dropped out of the top 20, four spots to number 22 in the world after failing to defend the points that he made from last year's Indian Wells. Ojeli Asim, he drops down five spots to number 36 in the world after failing to defend the quarterfinal points that he made in this tournament last year. And Pliskova, she drops down seven spots to number 46 in the world after failing to defend those points from last year's fourth round. And that's a shame because she's been really, really good lately. So a little bit of a backward step for her, but some drops there for the players that couldn't defend the points they made 12 months ago. All right, starting on the WTA side of things, and no change at the top with Igor Fiontek extending her lead against Sabalenka at number one with Sabalenka staying at number two. Goff stays at three with Rebecca at four. Pagula comes in at number five with Jabir at number six. There is a change in the middle there with Zhang going up one spot to number seven, pushing Von Drusova down to number eight. And that wasn't because Zhang played well. It's because Von Drusova lost a lot of points from last year's event. Zachary, she stays at number nine. We lost to Penko hanging on to that top 10 spot. But with Miami just around the corner, we could see some changes to the bottom half of the top 10 depending on players that do well. Look at the race of the finals now, and we have a change at the top. Igor Fiontek is now number one in the race of the finals after adding 1,000 points to her total, not to mention she also won in Doha, which gave her that extra 1,000. So she has now overtaken both Sabalenka and Rabakina, who get pushed down to number two and three in the race of the finals. Zhang, she stays at number four, but some more changes in the middle there with Goff going up two spots. After making the semi-finals, pushing Ostapenko and Paolini down to number six and seven. And Kostyuk is back into the top 10 for the first time in a couple weeks. Three spots higher than last week up to number eight. Pushing Kalinskaya down to number nine. Pavlyuchenkova stays at number 10. And Yastremska falls out of the top 10 completely. So some real big changes there to the top 10 and most of the top 10 moving around. Of course, Miami being a 1,000 event, there's going to be a lot of points up for grabs there. So this is getting a little bit more interesting, but also a lot of familiar names there as well. Going over to the men's side of things, no change at the top with Djokovic staying at number one, Alcaraz at two, and Sinner at three. And they were battling for that number two spot. So Alcaraz with the win keeps the number two spot for now. Medvedev stays at number four, but we do have a change in the middle with Rublev going down number six, making way for Zverev to go up to number five. After Zverev made the quarterfinals and Rublev had an early upset loss. Runa, he stays at number seven. And another change with Kasper Ruud going up to number eight, pushing her catch down to number nine. Again, after outperforming her catch, that's why Ruud got the boost. And Alex Diminor stays at number 10 for now. But between Ruud at number eight and the guys just outside the top 10, there's only about 600 points between them. So we could really see some changes to the rankings, especially that bottom half of the top 10 over the next week or two. Going over to the race of the finals and no change at the top with Sinner staying at number one and Medvedev at number two, but Alcaraz, he is back with a vengeance, rocketing back up the rankings, adding a thousand points. He goes up 16 spots to that number three spot, just pushing everybody else down after winning in Indian Wells. So huge boost for him this week. Zverev, he stays at number four, and because of Alcaraz going up, Diminor goes down to number five, two spots lower. Rublev goes down a spot to number six. Baez down to number seven. Umber goes down to number eight, all because of Alcaraz. Tommy Paul, he actually got a rise. He's back into the top 10, seven spots higher than last week after making the semis. Kasper Ruud also back in the top 10 after making the quarterfinals, pushing Djokovic out of the top 10 of the race of the finals. Bublik's out as well. And Hercatch also falling out of that top 10. So some real big changes there. And especially Djokovic not being featured in the top 10, and he won't be playing Miami. So Djokovic won't be on this list until maybe halfway through the clay court season. So really weird to see this list of ATB Finals qualification without Djokovic, and we're already in March. But there it is, a lot to cover at Indian Wells. Of course, one of the biggest tournaments outside of the slams, if not the biggest tournament outside the slams. Alcrest, Sriantec getting the wins, massive changes, especially the race of the finals. Things are starting to take some shape, but let me know down in the comments below. 
what's been the most exciting part, or maybe, maybe the most sad part this week, it was because Rafa didn't play, and he didn't get to watch Rafa, or maybe because Djokovic had that upset. Maybe that was the most exciting part, seeing a massive upset like that. Or maybe you're celebrating Alcaraz and Sviantec getting their wins at the tournament, but Miami starts next week. In fact, it starts in a couple of days. We have no time off between tournaments, straight back into it. We could see some big changes there, but they are the changes after Indian Wells.